Okay, basic introduction to Adobe Illustrator. I'll be demonstrating with an older version of the program called CS5. However, most newer users to Illustrator are probably using a Creative Cloud version, which easily translates from CS5, but it looks a little different. My version is going to have a, a light gray environment, which is transparent to the desktop, but I'll show you how to change that in case you are using CS5. But if you're in Creative Cloud, it would be a dark charcoaly black background. To begin, let's get the program open. Okay, so you can see all these light gray panels that have opened, but you still see the desktop back here. Uh, this is CS5. We're going to start a new file, and like any other program, it's file new. I'm demonstrating on a Mac, so the shortcut would be Command N. If you were on a PC, it would be Control N. Okay, the new document window. That should be standard. You can name your file right up front. You can choose presets depending on the work that you plan to do. But if you want to set it for yourself, you can identify how many artboards you will use in this project. And the artboard is the space in which you create. That can be changed or edited as your work goes on. So you don't have to add more than one at this time. Um, you choose your unit of measure. I always have the students default to inches because we understand that measurement. However, whatever unit of measure you're comfortable with, you should choose here. And then, of course, once you've chosen your unit of measure, then put your dimensions in. If it's a normal um, paper size, 8.5 by 11, uh, and depending on whether you're using... Um, portrait or landscape, it would determine which measurement goes in which space. And then there are advanced settings, which may show by default in your version of the program, but you may have to click to see the advanced options. That would be for color mode. Um, traditionally, CMYK represents a four color printing process cyan, magenta, yellow, and K stands for black, uh, or a digital format or a digital color mode. So any work you plan to have online or only seen through computer, that stands for red, green, blue. The truth is, if you happen to accidentally pick the wrong color mode, printers tend to compensate at this point. Uh, computers translate it. So it's not going to be the end of the world. If you sent a three color or RGB formatted um, document to a printer, it prints just fine. Um, but if you know what your outcome is meant to be, whether it's print or digital, you could target the color mode right up front. And again, once your file is created, you can also go back to edit that. You can edit the number of artboards, you can edit the size, you can edit your color mode. Roster effects, that would be your resolution. If you are creating a document for print, you really want your highest resolution. If you're creating something to be seen digitally, um, often a lower resolution is just fine, but for print, you'd go 300. Uh, you can leave default for your preview mode and click OK. So what you see now is the artboard, which has the black line as a boundary. You will have an option when printing to make sure anything created outside that boundary is blocked so it won't print. Um, however, you do get an option in your print window to include anything created outside the artboard as well. And this black line that borders the artboard does not appear in the print. So it's really not there. It's just identifying the edge. Once you've started a new file, you have your document, your artboard in front of you. You want to make sure you have the panels open that you'll most need in your project. 
So I've by default had my artboard panel open, but let's close it. By default, I had my layers open, but let's close it. And you can see down the side here on the right, there are other panels or windows that are already open. If you click on the drop down, you can see what are preset workspaces. So depending on what sort of work you're doing, the writers of the program have predetermined different windows or panels that you might want available to you. You don't have to work from one of these preset workspaces and no matter which workspace layout you choose, it doesn't change how the program works. It just has predetermined panels open. You have full control though over what panels are available to you while you're working. So I've closed everything here. Um, you can open and close panels or windows by clicking on the drop down window and whatever has a check next to it is what is open at the time. So tools, you want your tools. This is your tools panel or toolbar here on the um, side. And you, this double arrow here, if you click it, it just compresses it and it makes it two column as opposed to straight down. Um, but you'll always want that open. You don't really need that application bar open. That's simply what you're seeing across the top below the drop down. So with the space I'm working in, I'm on a 27 inch iMac. If you're working on a laptop or something with a smaller workspace, you might want to customize the workspace so that there's not so much open. Right now, I also have control. Uh, you definitely want control always open because depending on the tool or whatever you're selecting, different options will appear in control. So you do want that. Um, <clears throat> you also will always want your layers open. So click on layers and of course it comes with all sorts of other things. You don't need to keep them all open. I'm simply pulling layers out and I'll expand it so that as I create, I'm able to see my layers all at one time. It's a very handy thing to keep um, open. At, at some point, you might want to have appearance open, but really not necessary. You might want to have artboards open in case you're going to be adding a number of workspaces. The rest you really could get rid of and just click to make it go away. Now, if you want to have the same layout available to you every time, I'm just looking to see what else we might want to have open. For now, this is good enough, I think. Um, okay, if you wanna have your layout all set for you every time you open the program, you can create your own preset workspace. So you can place them where you want them to always be. Maybe you want them right up against the artboard. Maybe you want them off to the side. Maybe you want them way off to the side. And as you notice, I'm seeing my desktop here. If I don't want to see the desktop, because there is a downside on a Mac, I could accidentally click on the desktop. And as you can see, I've bounced out of Illustrator and I simply have to click anywhere in the Illustrator environment or click down here in the timeline and I'm back in it. But if you don't want to be bothered, if you press F, which is a shortcut key, simply press F, it fills your screen with the program itself. If I press F a second time, it gets rid of all the um, bars, panels, everything, and I might be able to simply view my artwork without distraction press f for a third time and i'm i'm back in that um mode where i can easily see the desktop as well of course you could always come down here and click and resize your workspace also um, f is just a simpler way to do it regardless of how you decide to set your workspace up once you create your own layout maybe you even want your tools over here again it's up to you um, depending on how you choose to lay it out you can simply create your own workspace um, workspace save workspace so that drop down that was in the top right corner where you could go to pick these uh, pre-formatted workspaces you also can get to it through window and now I could save this and let's say I want it 
to have my name so I know easily. So perhaps somebody else has been on your computer, they've been working in that essential mode, but when you come in, you sit down, you want to have it set up the way you want to have it set up. You just go into Workspace, click Deforester, and there it is. Okay, just another handy tip. Once you have the basic file set up and you're ready to start working, uh, it's very handy to have a ruler open. So you can find your ruler under View, go to View, Rulers, and Show Rulers, and notice the shortcut, Command-R for Mac, Control-R for PC. And you see a ruler has shown up across the top and down along the side. Um, this is helpful in the placement of objects when you're designing within this space. Also, what can be very handy is adding a grid to your workspace. When you add a grid, you go to Illustrator, Preferences, Guides and Grids. They don't actually hold when you print the work. They're simply there to help you visually line and place the different content. So whatever color is helpful for you, you want something that will sort of stay in the background um, so it's not distracting to you, but you definitely want to be able to see it. So whatever color works for you, uh, light gray, cyan, doesn't matter. And it basically is creating yourself a piece of graph paper that is imaginary, but you see it to use as a guide. Um, you could have a, a grid line every inch, and you could break that inch up into sections. Maybe you want, oh, well, let's just uh, split the grid into two sections. S click OK so you can see it. Now, of course you don't see it yet. You do have to turn the grid on if you go to View which makes sense because it's something you want to see. Um, show grid. So here's your grid. You can see that every inch you'll have a bolder line and then we've split it into two subsections so it's really every half inch you get a line. This is simply to help in the layout of the different elements of your content uh, to have things lined up or uh, balanced. I find these gray lines really distracting, however, so I'm going to go back into Guides and Grids and just change that light gray. Cyan really sits in the background a little better. Uh, there you go. And of course, if you decide you needed more grids, you can just keep editing this till it is whatever it is that you want. I want a grid with subdivisions every quarter inch. There we go. Now it's a lot more like graph paper. It's also very handy to be able to change the document size. So if you realize 8.5 by 11 is not the size you needed, you could simply go into Document Setup, go into Edit Artboards, and using the ruler as your guide or the tags that appear as you click and drag, um, you can measure. Uh, let's say we wanted 11 inches wide, so I'm going to go from here, and as I drag, I see the W and the H for width and height, and I can keep dragging till I get to 11. Um, and of course, my panel is in the way here. So I've gone beyond it. I need a steady hand to get it exactly, but you can. You can click and drag till you get it exact, which I just did, or you could have simply come up here typed in 11 and use my tab to get to height or H or simply click in there and let's change my height to 17 press return and command minus to um, zoom out so I see the whole artboard I could have used my ruler as a guide to resize this document the only problem is that I I'm not aligned with zero inches, so I would have to count from 11 inches. Adding 11 takes me to 22, which of course I can do, but it's a lot easier to have your document actually start at zero, and then you could have simply looked at the ruler to click and drag. So there's different ways to do it. You can do it manually, you can type in the dimensions, uh, that's up to you. And then just click on another tool to bounce yourself out of there. And maybe you're ready to begin. If
if by chance you've decided you need more than one artboard because let's say you wanted to create a brochure and you want to be able to see all the panels side by side perhaps zooming out command minus or control minus or command plus to zoom in or control plus you can simply come to your artboard panel down here in the bottom right and you can add as many artboards as you want cover inside left inside right and back panel it, it just depends on what you're trying to create and of course let's zoom out even more you can rearrange how they are appearing just for convenience sake get to your artboard tool you can click and drag it doesn't really matter this is just simply behind the scenes uh laying out it has nothing to do with the final work that you would create now if you have too many artboards like anything else go to the trash and let's throw them out and now we're back to just one artboard and we are aligned on zero however i think there we go okay and we're going to zoom back in now i think we've covered all the basics for setting yourself up. The last thing that can be helpful in setup would be changing your color mode. However, color mode could be changed at any time. You could have all your content in your document already and still change your color mode. However, let's cover it quickly. So in our document, we created it with an RGB color mode. Simply, we decide we know for sure it's going to be printed, so let's just target the correct color mode by going to File, Document Color Mode, click CMYK, and it is as simple as that. We are now ready to create 